Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and the time for the asking of the Herbert Erpaderp is once more upon us. Before I go too far, I want to let you know that if you're interested in 7 Days to Die, and I assume I've got some 7 Days to Die as background video, unless I've changed my mind after doing this voiceover, which is pretty unlikely. Anyway, I want to let you know that I have set up a small 7 Days to Die server, mostly because the one Barnaby and I were playing on disappeared, and with our own server we don't have to worry about that. And being my own server I can set up a whitelist, so I've done that. As fun as it is having our own 7 Days to Die server to ourselves, it can be a bit lonely. Poor us. So I figured why not open the server up to the community, it could be fun. I've also set up a text channel on my Discord server, the link for which is in the description, so if you want to play on the same server as Barnaby and I, pop in there and ask to be whitelisted. The rules there are the same as Discord, and if you're a shit you'll find yourself banned. Ok, that's enough of that, let's get to the questions. Ratto said, if a player buys army dice like orc dice for an orc army, or Australia dice for an Australian army, are those dice biased? I don't know if it makes the dice biased, or if it just makes them feel like they're part of the team or whatever. The thing that really matters is the will of the dice gods, and if you've performed whatever rituals or sacrifices are required to satisfy them. Spacefan said, related to Ratto's question, why when I play Flames of War using German dice, I play as the US, do I have such bad luck? Well you're clearly using the wrong dice. They don't feel like they're part of the team and they're being spiteful because of it. The dice gods don't mind that, they think it's funny so they allow it to happen. Generally I don't believe in gods, that is very silly, but the dice gods are very real and very spiteful. Trekan Belovich said, is Budgerigar or Budgie a proper name for a tank? Sure, why not? I'm pretty sure I've even seen at least one tank with the name Budgie or maybe Budgerigar, or maybe I'm imagining it, who knows. It does make sense if there is a naming scheme with B names for B platoon or something like that. I personally can think of much more sensible and mature names that I would use, but Budgie or Budgerigar seem fine. Stuglife said, when will you show your collection of models? I have no plans to, but this question does keep coming up and I feel like nobody is listening when I answer it. I have a lot of models, and I don't feel like it's worth investing the time that it would take to get all of the models out of boxes and off shelves, set them up, video them, then write and say something about them. I don't have a lot of interest in it and I don't see there being much point in making a video like that. If I thought somehow it was going to get a huge amount of views I might be a bit more interested, but I just don't see it having much value. And it does feel a bit pretentious. Maybe that's not the right word, but it would kind of be like, oh look how many models I have, without anything of value. At least with a build or painting video you can see how the model goes together or how things have been done, and there might be something helpful there. It would be taking the time I would use to make a video that I actually want to make, and using it to make one that I don't really want to make. Besides, if you want to see pretty much all of the models I have, I have done videos on almost every single one of them. Excluding of course the ones I did before I even started making videos, though there aren't many of them. Some people seem to think that I also build and paint models that aren't in videos, somehow like there's enough time for that. That's a lot of words to say, I'm not going to. Stuglife also said, does the number 999 piss you off the most, because I sure get pissed at it. No, I don't generally get pissed off at numbers. Maybe I'm missing some kind of context or a joke or something here, but I feel like if simple numbers just existing pisses you off you probably should consider getting some professional help. Head of Secret Science Boys said, could Anzacs in Bob Semples beat the dreaded emu? Hmm, most likely, I mean Bob Semple is pretty well overpowered, but emus are crafty. I guess the only way to know for sure is to try it out, for science. Maverick95 said, are you ever going to review slash build Flames of War starter kits like the Hit the Beach set? At the moment it's not likely. The last box set I did was a British one, the name of which I've forgotten, Armoured Battle Group I think? Though that's not so much a starter set, and I should actually finish building the guns that came with that box. 
Anyway, the main reason for not doing starter sets is that they're not super cheap. They're not super expensive either, but still, $50 US, which I believe is how much Hit the Beach costs, is still around 70 to 80 Australian dollars. When you consider that it involves buying models that I already have and don't necessarily need or want, it's less of a good deal. I don't make anywhere near enough money doing this to be able to afford just buying stuff for the sake of it, so it does have to be something that I want or will use. Like anybody, I have to be responsible with money. That said, if you really, really want me to do a video on something, I do have a P.O. Box address in the description, and you can send things to it if you want. But, I mean, you would really have to want to see a video on it. Also, if Battlefront are watching, I'm always happy to receive review copies. Not that I expect them, but it is fun when that happens. Martin Gotham said, Can you name all five Thunderbirds? Hmm. Gary? Um... Gary 2? I... uh... okay, I can't. I don't think I could name one. Not without cheating and googling it anyway. I assume you mean the characters and not the vehicles, because as far as I know, the vehicles just have numbers. Trekan Belovich said, Do you paint your models one after the other, or are there a number of them on your painting table at the same time? Generally, I like to work on multiple projects at once, so that I've got some choice in what I do from day to day. This applies to painting and building, and that is one of the reasons I have different projects going for morning streams on Mondays and the evening streams on Wednesdays. At the moment, I have four things in various stages of painting, and I may very well decide to work on something else before I finish any of them. Who knows? Focusing on one build or one paint job kind of feels like a chore, so I choose not to do that. Joseph Stalin said, Are you interested in the Zvezda M4A2 that's coming out this year? I have seen that and I am interested, though not so interested that I'm going to buy it the instant that it's released or anything like that. I don't do many Shermans, but this one seems to have some unusual tracks, so it might be one that I pick up. Who knows? Mouse Chan said, Do you like Pop-Tarts? I feel indifferent to them. I don't think I've had one for more than 10 years now, and because they're not especially high in nutritional content and have a lot of sugar, they're not high on my list of things to buy. Corned Beef said, Do you buy many second-hand models, unbuilt, and if so, what's the worst thing you've ever found in the box? Once I found cigarette ashes. That is gross. I don't think I've ever bought any second-hand models, so I don't have any stories of finding anything awful in them like that. Though once, some bandmates bought a used power amp for a PA system, and it turns out the previous owner was a very heavy smoker. So, when we fired it up, it just reeked of reheated old smoke, which was obviously disgusting. On the rare occasion that I'm buying something used, I do try to make sure that it comes from a non-smoking environment. So far, no unexpected surprises, at least not included with the box. Things breaking and such is kind of an unexpected surprise, but I don't think that's what you meant. Sodium Chloride said, Are you planning to shift into painting a bit more in future, or will there always be a prevalence of assembly? Also, which part in the process of creating models is your favourite? Is it assembly, painting, weathering, or thinking possible modifications and colour schemes you can do on a new model? At this point, there's no way I'm going to push to make more painting videos. They take a bit more time and effort to put together, and they do tend to get less views. It's absolutely not worth busting my ass, causing myself stress, and ruining my enjoyment of painting to put out more videos that people aren't as interested in. I mean, I'm not entirely driven by views. If I were, I would have stopped doing Ask a Herbert Erbaderp a long time ago. I'm simply not interested in burning myself out, especially if it actually results in lower views. The painting gets finished when it's finished, and then the video gets done soon after. I manage to finish around one a month, and I think that's pretty good. I feel like a lot of people underestimate the time that it takes to make a video every single week, and in my case quite often more than one. As for which part of model making is my favourite, I would say that I don't have an absolute favourite, and it really depends on my mood. If I don't feel like painting, but for whatever reason I'm forced into doing it, I'm not going to enjoy it. 
but I do rather like assembly, and I would go so far as to say that is probably one of the things I enjoy the most, and it's likely why I don't feel like it's too much of a chore to do two model assembly streams a week. The Tourette's Gamer said, Alright Herbert, here's my question. Leopard 1 or Leopard 2? Hmm. Leopard 1. Having no context for why I'm to choose one over the other, I'll almost always pick one that I think looks cooler, which for me is Leopard 1. I'm sure Leopard 2 is technically a better tank by all metrics, but I don't especially care about that. Spacefan said, What is your favourite Sherman variant? I'm pretty sure this was asked somewhat recently, but it's the Calliope, because it's so ridiculous and I enjoy ridiculous odd tanks. Grungy Dan said, Is ranch dressing on pizza a thing in Australia? I think I have seen pizzas with that advertised, or something pizza related anyway. I don't think ranch is as popular here as it seems to be in the US, and I almost never see it. Digital Rocket said, And if ranch dressing on pizza is a thing, then why? Why not? People like different things. It's not something that I would think to do, but I've also never tried it, and it might be nice on the right pizza. A duck drinking cough syrup said, Have you ever been swooped by a magpie? I have, quite a few times actually, mostly when I was younger. They used to nest in parks near my house and at school. It is kind of startling, but you learn to avoid the area they've claimed. Doesn't happen so much now because I don't go outside because that's where the weather is. Sneaky Zaku said, How are all your pets doing? Been a while since I've seen the little red wigglies anyway. They're mostly doing pretty well. One of my mice did die the other day, but he was getting very old, so it wasn't unexpected. As I'm writing this out, I can see more tiny baby shrimp in my red shrimp tank, so they seem to be doing pretty well. I've also got some more baby endless live bearers, which is cool. Martin Gotham said, Have you heard of the channel Luke Towen? And Stuglife adds, Have you met him in person? I am familiar with Luke Towen's channel. I haven't met him though. Australia is a big place, and I believe he's from Victoria, which is not close at all. But he does do amazing work, and if you haven't seen his videos, I would definitely recommend them. I think the last thing I saw him do was make a subway station, which was very cool. He mostly does model railway stuff, but even if you're not into that sort of thing, you could definitely learn some things that you could apply to other models, and wargaming terrain and things like that. Martin Gotham also said, Have you used MIG mud effects before? Or think about trying it out? I haven't, though I have thought about it. One day I probably will pick some up, or maybe a similar product anyway. At this point I don't have any plans. I generally don't like to make my models too muddy, and I feel like the kind of mud products like MIGs are better for larger models where the actual texture of the mud should stand out a bit more. In smaller scales like 28mm or 15mm, I much prefer it to be quite subtle. In the YouTube comment section of last fortnight's Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, Jan Tima said, Stroop waffles or cheese? Which Dutch food do you prefer? Well, cheese as a generic thing isn't really a Dutch food, though I do like cheese. I think I will choose Stroop waffle. They're pretty delightful, though not something I can have all that often. Also, I don't seem to see them in the shop that often, but they are nice. Colin Spears said, One thing, Herbert, about you being old, in quotation marks. I'm 55 this year. One of the things you and your community do is show me that you can always learn new things. Okay, I guess you win at being old. Really though, I think age is just a number. As long as you're enjoying yourself and learning and such, what does it really matter? I think the little community we have is pretty great, and we can all learn from each other. Plymouth Gaming said, What knife and glue and magnets do you use for Flames of War stuff? The knife I use is an X-Acto number 1. I chose the red one so that I can cut faster, and it has X-Acto number 11 blades in it. It's a pretty simple knife and there are a lot of very similar knives available. If you're looking for a new knife, do make sure that you'll be able to get plenty of extra blades. What I mean is, don't get ones that have some sort of proprietary connection or something that force you into buying only their blades. 
shouldn't be much of a problem really. I think Exacto number 11 blades should fit in pretty much every single similar knife, though I obviously can't guarantee that. For glue I use Tamiya Extra Thin on plastic, though other plastic cements should work perfectly fine. If the models are resin and metal, you'll need super glue for those. You can buy modelling branded super glues, but I feel like they're a bit of a waste, so I just use cheap super glue from the supermarket. And I prefer the kind that comes in a little bottle with a brush. You won't need that for plastic models, and it's not especially recommended to build plastic models with super glue, but it is handy to have around anyway, especially if you want to use magnets. The magnets I use come from the Combat Company here in Australia. They're simple rare earth magnets. The ones I use are 4.75mm in diameter, and I think 1.5mm thick. Something like that shouldn't be too hard to find. I would say that all of these things are fairly generic. Brands aren't super important as long as you find something that works. Doug the Stug said, can you do another solo war game? I do plan on it, not immediately though. Of any of the videos I do, the solo wargaming ones have taken the most time and effort. It would be a lot easier if I had a space where I could just leave a gaming table set up, but I don't have room for that here. I'm also in the middle of working on some more structures for bolt action games, and I would really like to get those done before I do another solo war game, just so that there's more terrain to hide behind, and it looks as best as it can. I'm thinking next time I do another solo war game, I might try and do Tank War. Could be a little bit easier and quicker to work my way through the game, so it's possible that I could get two games done in the time that it took me to get the game with all the infantry and such done. I'll have to see how it goes. Whatever the case, it will be better with more terrain, so I'm not going to do that before I've finished the buildings. Also, it probably sounds shitty, but there isn't really a whole lot of incentive to put in all of that work. I'm sure there are people who think it's just a matter of turning on a camera and then 20 minutes later you've got a video, but there really is a lot more to it than that, and those videos do take a lot of time. Time that I could get a lot of other stuff done in. That said, if people are really interested in seeing more solo wargaming, I did set a Patreon goal for regular wargames. I've forgotten how much it is, but it is a fair bit. Of course, the more people who become patrons and the more patrons tell me they want that sort of thing, the more inclined I'll be to do it. At the moment, it's just a when I get around to it and finding the time thing, as opposed to something I have incentive to actively plan for, if that makes sense. EP Art said, what are you looking forward to in this year's Shizuoka Hobby Show? I'm probably absolutely slaughtering that name, but the answer is literally nothing. I don't really keep track of hobby shows, and I think this might even be the first time I've heard of the Shizuoka Hobby Show. I've no idea what's going to be there or what there is to look forward to, though I'm sure it is interesting for a lot of people, otherwise the show just wouldn't exist. I just don't feel like those kind of things have a lot of impact on my day-to-day -day life. I am assuming they show new releases and things like that, which could be cool, but I'm not going to be buying those kits and definitely not pre-ordering, if that's a thing. And if there is something cool coming out that's relevant to my interests, I'm sure at some point I'll see it, but I would really rather spend my time doing other things. I don't have that level of obsession with the hobby, and I don't think it really helps me to spend time learning about new products that I won't be buying and will probably forget about anyway. Now, if I were physically going there it would be a different story, but I'm not. I'm sure for the people who are interested it's very cool and exciting, it just doesn't really do much for me. Anyway, that's it for the questions. Let's check out some of the models that have been shared on the Discord server over the last couple of weeks. First up, M4 Valentine has been doing a little bit of kit bashing on the Italeri Warlord KV-1 and 2 kit. I'm not sure which boxing they got, though it doesn't really matter anyway. These Soviet tanks have been Germanized, which is a word now. New details include German cupolas, crew figures, some extra stowage, and new main guns. The one on the KV turret looks quite interesting. It has that whatever you call it like a Panzer IV would have. I also really like the section of missing track guard on the right side of the hull. A very interesting choice. I don't know where all of these parts have come from, but I do know that it's really interesting, and I'm sure when it's painted this is going to be amazing. Keep up the awesome work. Oil God shared this excellent looking Iranian M47M. 
A lot of progress pictures of this were shown, and it's been very fun watching it take shape. The end result is awesome, as you can probably see, unless you're looking away, in which case you should be looking at the screen to see some awesome work. I really like the bits of rebar on the sides of the turret. The sandbags and the bits of sheet steel at the front and sides with the bullet holes in them look really good too, as does the general paint job and weathering. Very nice work indeed. Myra shared their first ever airplane kit. It's an Airfix F-51D marked and painted as tail number 9287 of the Royal Canadian Air Force, serving as a member of the tactical fighter flight at the Rivers Manitoba Joint Air Training Centre in the early 1950s. Myra says real photos of this aircraft show it exceptionally clean, except for the nose area, which was pretty grimy and exhaust stained. This model looks like it's gone together very nicely, and you've painted it well, and I rather appreciate the information you supplied with the picture. It was interesting. Amateur hobbyist shared this bazooka team and asks if we think they overdid it with the basing. I don't think so, and in my opinion it looks really cool. I'm sure somebody might complain about it being hard to see the models or something like that during gameplay, but they're probably not really the sort of person you want to play with anyway. I think it's fine. Unsurprisingly, I'm also quite amused by the thought of a tree and fence moving around the battlefield along with the bazooka team. That's the sort of ridiculousness I like. And it's always nice to see models on interesting bases. Very cool. Kosen shared this HE-162 Volksjäger. This is one interesting and odd looking plane with that engine up on its back. I have no idea about the scale or manufacturer of the kit, but it is quite good looking and very well painted. I especially like that the engine cowling is opening, and there's, I'm assuming, a second separate engine on a stand. I also like the arrow at the front letting us know which way the plane goes. Very nice. Vrokali shared these figures, saying they had some Fireforge Russian infantry and some bolt action Soviet bits left over. These have been dubbed the Time Travelling Ivans. I'm very entertained by this concept, and they're rather nicely done too. I especially like that one has a Molotov. Awesome work. And that's it for the modelling this fortnight. As always, only a handful of pictures have been shared, but there is a lot of good stuff shared in the modelling section of Discord every day. So if you're not already a member there, do go check it out and maybe share some of your own modelling work as well. Or art. We have an art section too. And next time we're going to look at some of that art. Thank you all for sharing your work, asking questions and watching my videos. Ask a Herbert Erpida will return next fortnight, so until then, have a fantastic time, don't forget to do all those things like following and subscribing, check out the links in the description, and be excellent to each other. Also, thank you for watching. Farewell.